This is over at the hill overlooking my house. I hope you can hear the sound of this. I'm not sure if it'll come back. Hello, Pastor. How are you doing? I'm doing well, thank you. All right. Yeah. Forgot about that. All right. We have to thank God for, for the gift of life and make it for a next link. Uh, the four of us, because we are three in the room and uh, you, so we are four in total. Yes, indeed. Amen. Indeed. Um, I, uh, I will share a little bit with you. We're going to, we're going to start. I'm going to stop it right here, but I, I'm going to cover some of the scriptures. Uh, I, I will have this, I think I already have it up on our YouTube channel. Uh, but the point is, these are four young men in Kenya who are on fire for the Lord, who love Jesus. And they're going out and evangelizing. They asked me yesterday, can we meet with you for Bible study every Saturday? Can, can you help us get some Bibles? And, and so w what are we here for? He said, you'll be my witnesses, Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the uttermost parts of the earth. So I just wanted you to kind of see. I had another group that's contacted me. Of course, I'm working. we're working with Brother Hope and Sister Thondra. God is multiplying this ministry around the world. And we had another water pump put in in this last week over in that village. So you don't need to. Yeah, I'm done with this. So, I forget those logistics. So, at any rate, um, what I'm saying to you is that we're going into the into this mission field globally, and I believe the Lord is about to do some amazing, amazing things. And uh, and and when I'm talking about doing amazing things corporately, I'm also talking about doing amazing things individually. So let's pray. Father, thank you for this time that you've given us today, and for the breeze that's coming ahead of the 97 degrees that's coming later. And thank you for giving us a, a hope and a future. Thank you for causing us to, to, no matter what we experience in our life, if we have you, we have hope. And we know that you work all things together for our good. And Father, we know that your word is, is truth and it's word and it's powerful and it's not just a collection of random philosophies. Help us to remember that as we engage today and as we go through our week. And Father, I pray that as this gets out to anyone, anyone, Lord, that may not know you, Jesus, as their Savior, that they would take the time today to repent and believe the gospel because this is their opportunity, hearing this today. Lord, we praise you and thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. So these are some of the scriptures I was covering with these guys yesterday. And we started in Matthew chapter 6. If you're going to be an evangelist in Kenya and you're going around talking to people, most of whom have never even heard about, imagine that, never even heard about Jesus. There are a lot of people in the world who have never heard about Jesus. We get to be a part of that by the grace of God. So I'm talking to these guys and I know that that when when we get it when you go into ministry, when you make that step into ministry, there are some things that concern you. You know, I, I know when I went from business to ministry back in, in nineteen eighty nine, I had no idea how things were going to come together. But I, I'm I'm gonna stop right now. I want to pray for these guys. Father I, I pray for for these brothers Vincent and Stephen, I can't remember the other fellow, and I know there's another one that wasn't able to be there. I, I pray that your hand would be on their evangelistic efforts, and, and Father, that you would cause many souls to come to Christ, and that we, Lord, by the grace of God and all humility, get to be a part of that is an amazing thing. We bless you and thank you in Jesus' name. So this is what we started off with. Therefore, do not worry, saying, what shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? For after all these things the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. I want to. I want to just. I want to put that. Uh, kind of. I don't. I can't put it in bold because it's a picture. 
I want you to understand he knows you need these things. You got stuff you need, God knows you need these things, okay? But setting that aside, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added to you. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will, wor will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. And we were, we were comparing and contrasting English versions while I was talking. So um, I'll just read the last little bit in the New Living Translation. Seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously, and he will give you everything you need. So we, we need to understand that when you're discipling, you got to deal with some baseline issues. And that happens in our own life too. Because what happens that prevents us from growing in our discipleship in Christ are the buts that come up in our life. But this, but that, but I can't, but there's not time, but I don't have. If God says do it, I want to tell you, do it. Because he will not tell you, he will not give you a vision for something that he hasn't already made provision for. And, and, and listen, I have had to remind myself that one times 10 to the 17th power. I don't even know. I mean, you know, you, you got, it's okay to remind yourself. That's why the word is there for us. That's why God gives us the word so we can remind ourselves who's really in charge of the event. All right. The event being your life, my life. Okay. So next place, I, I, I just, I just tagged into this and this wasn't part of our, our, our lesson yesterday, but it was, we had this up last, last Sunday and, and, and it talks about our Father, God being our Father. It talks about us talking to Him about our daily bread. And then we read in the 23rd Psalm, He makes, he makes sure we have everything we need. I, I, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures, making sure we've got all the stuff we need. He's, he, gets, he gets me to those places of peace when I need peace in my life. He restores my soul. He takes me to that optimum version of me, the actual intelligence, not the artificial intelligence that God intended for me to be. You know, That's where we need to be. God has a plan for each one of us. And we can either run for it, run from it and resist it, or we can surrender to it and accelerate into his blessings and purpose for our life. I want to ask you a question. Do you think you have a better plan for your life than God has? All right. So just laying a little bit of baseline down. So as I'm looking at this, and I, I am going to shorten this today because I, 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 I want to get all the word out. It won't be quite as long as normal, but I, I'm, I'm, I'm listening to the, to the Lord, okay? And, and I, I went back to last week, and he gave, me the, he gave me the reminder, I am. By the way, I was praying this morning, and, uh, and uh, I was praying specifically for Stefan. And, uh, and, and, I, and I, got, I moved on, and the Lord said, I'm an engineer. And I went, well, well, that's interesting. Why would you say that? Well, you know, think about it. I have a perfect design. I even anticipated the flaw, and I had a remedy for the flaw in advance. And, and, and the flaw was necessary. And I went, really? Yeah, because if I didn't give you free will, you'd just be a bunch of robots. Okay? So, and, and so we need to understand God has a plan and purpose. If he can plan and purpose the entire universe, I think he can handle my life, your life, maybe. Okay? That's up to you. You know, I was, I was talking to somebody. Um, I was talking to somebody about the man at the, at the well of Bethesda who'd been uh, lame for 37 years, and Jesus asks them this insensitive question. Uh, the woke crowd would be really upset. Don't you want to be healed? Do you want to be healed? You know what he wasn't asking him? He wasn't asking him, is your desire to be healed? He was asking him, can you see past where you are to that place? Can, can you, do you have some faith inside of you that can reach past lying on that stinking mat and you can't get down there fast enough when the angel troubles the water. Are you, are, you, are you ready to go past that place? That's what he's asking him. And that's what he asks us. When we've got stuff in our life that is burdening us down in our minds, burdening us down in our finances, whatever it is, our mental health, physical health, whatever it is, what he's asking us is, you think I can handle that? Are you willing to do what I'm telling you to do? What did Jesus tell the lame man to do next? after they had their religious argument. 
pick up your bed and walk. I, I, you know, I got to tell you, that inspired me when I was going through cancer treatment. That's why I did my Tai Chi every day when I was in the waiting room to get my chemotherapy because I wasn't taking it lying down. And that's what God intends for us. We're supposed to trust him and understand he has our best in mind and he'll see us through the circumstances and the circumstances will not overwhelm us. All right, we need to understand, we know, we've got to be able to trust him like that because he's that I am. He's everywhere all the time, 100% uh, uh, powerful in every situation. There's nothing that he can't affect if you'll let him. You see, that's why Jesus asked the lame man, do you want to be healed? Because some people are satisfied being lame. Not me. I wasn't satisfied with the stage three colon cancer report. So I took it immediately to the court of heaven. I received my healing that day. And the Lord said, now go through the process. I have some things to teach you. Sometimes we have to go through the process so that he can teach us what we need to learn so that we can handle what he's about to put in our hands. All right, so very important part here. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. There is when you're flying a plane, couple of different ways you can figure out what's going on. You can fly by your instruments or you can fly by visual sighting. I can see the airport. I'm going to drive down there and just land. Sometimes you don't get that opportunity because the clouds are around you and the lightning's going on. What do you do when you can't read the instruments and you can't see what's going on? You cannot lean on your own understanding anymore, pilot. Not Pontius, but the regular airplane kind of pilot. Just so you didn't get, I did, don't go religious on me. I wasn't giving any analogies. All right. So we have to be able to trust him in those moments. We have to trust him with all of our heart in those moments. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. I absolutely guarantee it. I guarantee it. I, I'm, I'm experiencing it right now. I had no idea what the process was going to be coming here to pastor the church. I had no idea what the process was going to be with Novacab and how that was going to work out. I got to tell you, I got invited by Judge Evans to come in because they're applying for a grant to make the city more, uh, more environmentally friendly and energy efficient, and they're asking me to help. I didn't do that. You know who did that? And, and guess what? About two weeks, about two weeks after I'd had a conversation just off the cuff with Judge Evans about kind of the stuff that we're doing, the city gets, they get this opportunity to be considered the same as an incorporated city. And then they get the notification of this grant. And he said, I couldn't help but think of you when I got it. So I'm going, so that happened by accident. No. Okay. All right. Basically, what God did is he, he had the target right in front of him. He put the gun on his shoulder, aimed it backwards, shot around the world, and hit a bullseye. That's our God. All right. For, and and this, is thing, this, is, this is where we need to really get here. For the word of God, the word of God, the word of God is alive and powerful. It's sharper than the sharpest two-edged sword, cutting between soul and spirit, between joint and marrow. Get this. It exposes our innermost thoughts and desires. A lot of times people come to faith and they think they can just walk it out on the outside. But their thoughts and desires have not been surrendered to the Lord. So what happens? They have confusion. If we're going to go forward and we're going to walk into the best that he has for us, we have to trust him all the way and understand his word is true and it will reveal our innermost thoughts and desires. Nothing in all creation is hidden from God. Everything is naked and exposed before his eyes and he is the one to whom I am accountable. We are accountable. We need to be serious about our walk with Jesus. We, we need to recognize this isn't just showing up 
and and being here for an hour or so or two hours or so or whatever it works out as this is about coming here to be equipped to be able to carry out the mission that he commissioned us with the day that we were born again and filled with his spirit to go into all the world and make disciples not sit on our blessed assurances and get old you can do that you're free to do that but i want to tell you god has a purpose and plan for you if you'll surrender to him this got to me you got some things you want in your life you have some things you need in your life everybody does look at what psalm 37 tells us does this begin to look like maybe it's an instruction manual that it might be able to help you get through the, the tough places in life and get where you want to go, and more importantly, get where he wants you to go. Trust in the Lord and do good. <clears throat> Pretty simple right there, except when you do it. you got to do it. You can't just read it. These words are not just for reading and processing through your actual intelligence that you have in your head. These are for application in your life and to those around you. That's how we go into all the world and make disciples. Then you will live safely in the land and prosper. Listen to this. Take delight in the Lord and he will give you your heart's desires. Do you think God's a liar? Huh? Come on. He's telling us the truth. What happens is people read the words and they ignore the truth. If you read the words, but you don't embrace the truth, all you've done is added some digits to your memory bank. I want to tell you, as far as good, I, 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 I think about eternity, heaven, the, the rest of forever. The, there's not even a word for it beyond. We don't even understand how long eternity is. Or what that even means what kind of concept can you how can an, how can a finite understand an infinite okay but but what but I know is I'm gonna be in this amazing place I'm gonna be around with you guys and Jerry's gonna be able to run then without a pain okay hallelujah and and and, and the thing is I, I know that we haven't even begun to see it says I but as it is written I has not seen nor ear heard nor have entered into the heart of man the things God has prepared for those who love him do you love him we if we love him he's got good stuff for us he's our father I I you know I I loved I loved Christmases because when I was a kid there were six kids you, you know you know what the tree looks like I mean cuz the parents aren't going to back then is you got to have the more stuff you got the better it was you know, I think it still is that way with some people, you know, but but the idea is it's exciting. But but that's just a teeny tiny picture of childhood go joy that God has for us in reality as we delight ourselves in him, as, as, as we recognize that he is everything we, we need. He is our inheritance. He's my inheritance. He's the desire of my heart, the lover of my soul. That's the one that we're serving. And he wants to do good for us. But, and, and this is one of the reasons I, I, love, I love the Matrix, even though the, the producers got confused with gender and stuff. Um, you can see what's being programmed into you to see, or you can walk according to the truth. you got to unplug from the Matrix, because all it's going to do is drain the life out of you. The life, the good things that God has for you, if you don't pull yourself out of the matrix, they're gone. And the matrix will fed on your energy. All right? We need to understand that God has good things for us. It t he tells us over and over and over and over his intent is to bless us. All right, moving on. Camped out there a little bit. So we talked about practical application of our faith. And, and so... I, I, I want to read this to you from Micah chapter 6. What shall I come before the Lord? With what shall I come before the Lord and bow myself before the high God? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams, 10,000 rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? That's where religion takes us. 
When we get trapped in religion, we're on a, tre a treadmill and, and the devil just likes to watch us run. And he keeps turning it up and turning it up and laughing at us. We are not going to get there by works. But I want to tell you, there's something about work we, works we need to understand. He has shown you, O oh man, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you? There are requirements. Do justly, love mercy, walk humbly with your God. That's your requirement. That means that all of your Burger King fantasies of having it your way go out the window. You need to be seeking first his kingdom and his righteousness because, hallelujah, he's got the real impossible burger. You know, I'm on a roll today. Watch out. All right, it's a good thing Robin Williams is gone. I'd be taking his job. All right. Hallelujah. All right, so so this, this is what got me. Um, this is what got me into ministry uh, to homeless. Um, this homeless family came. I told you the story before. I, I, I did the best I could, couldn't find him a shelter. Went for a walk, and the Lord opens up Isaiah 58 to me, in the verse, beginning in the sixth verse. No, this is the kind of fasting I want. Free, lo free those who are wrongly imprisoned. Do you know all of those homeless people are wrongly imprisoned? They're imprisoned in the matrix that's put them where they are. Their thought patterns, their emotional patterns, their life skills patterns have placed them in the place they're, they're prisoners. Free those who are wrongly imprisoned. Lighten the burden. You know, there's this ghost town over here. I forget, it's called Lobo, I think it is. There's nobody living in it. I'm thinking it might be a homeless shelter someday. Just saying, just saying, all right, just saying. Uh, I'm saying that the, that, that campground's going to have some purpose in the near future too. I'm just, just saying, because the Lord says I can say those things, all right? It says, let the oppressed go free. No, it says, lighten the burden of those who work for you. Let the oppressed go free and remove the chains that bind people. Share your food with the hungry. Give shelter to the homeless. Give clothes to those who need them. And do not hide from relatives who need your help. Listen to these promises. Then your salvation will come like the dawn and your wounds will heal quickly. Your godliness will lead you forward and the glory of the Lord will protect you from behind. Then you will call upon the Lord and he will answer. Yes, I am here. He will quickly reply. Remove the heavy yoke of oppression. Stop pointing your finger and spreading vicious rumors. That, uh, that, also, that word there also means gossip. Uh, feed the hungry and help those in trouble. Listen to these promises. Then your light will shine out from the darkness. The darkness around you will be as bright as noon. The Lord will guide you continually, giving you water when you are dry and restoring your strength. You will be like a well-watered garden, like an ever-flowing spring. Some of you will rebuild the deserted ruins of your cities. Then you will be known as a rebuilder of walls and a restorer of homes. Listen, I want to, I want to tell you, when, when, I, when I was going through the cancer treatment, I listened to this. Isaiah 58 scripture, and I reminded God, do you remember those 10 years? You remember what I was doing? You said that I would, my health would spring forth speedily. So I'm counting on you to do that. 16 months from the stage three diagnosis to the day almost, I got, you have no cancer in your body. That's what God does. We take our problems and our circumstances to him, and I didn't put the scripture down, but I'll tell you what Jesus says, cast those on me. Cast your cares on him. And the, and the word cast isn't like cast, it's like slam, like in a basketball game. Slam them onto Jesus. Get your hands off of it and let him do what needs to be done. And a lot of times what needs to be done has to happen in here. And you need to be yielded to him, not only as Savior, but as Lord, for you to be able to receive that. Now I got some other stuff here. The thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy, John 10, 10a. He will steal your health. He will steal your finances. He will steal your marriage and family. He will steal your mental health. He will kill your hope, He will kill your hope, dreams, and testimony. The, the biggest thing that happens there is when, when hope is gone. Have you ever been hopeless, almost hopeless? I want to tell you what, that is, that is a, I was thinking about those people, everybody was on, the, on that little submarine. First of all, God bless them. I pray that they were saved. But what were they thinking? They get in a carbon fiber shell vessel 
that goes down to the place where there are, I don't know how many tens of thousands of pounds per square inch, to see a wrecked boat underwater and spend $120,000 for it or more. No, that's just crazy. First of all, I may have to be buried without a coffin because I am not going in any submarine. I'm telling you, I'm praying for the rapture because I, you know, I don't like small, I don't like enclosed spaces. I, I got to go to Houston and be in downtown Houston for three days for this revival coming up. I'm shaking it off right now because the uh, claustrophobia trying to attack me. <laughs> I, I love it when I can come out here and just breathe, you know. And but but I want to tell you, the devil doesn't listen. I I, I was reading a, a little bit this morning. It says the devil doesn't care if you read your Bible. The devil only cares when you do what the Bible says. He doesn't care when you go to church. He only cares when you are the church. You see, religion never threatened him. He founded the first one. Seriously, worship me. That was his. That was his thing. I was created. I'm almost as good as him. Worship me. No. Listen, we need to be the church. These things that are happening right now, they, they look small. The Bible says don't despise the day of small things. All right. But this little work we're doing with Sister Thandra, this little work that's going on with Brother Hope, this, this other stuff that's going on, God sees that stuff. And you know what he sees? He sees a body who has risen up to the occasion to go into all the world and to be his disciples, to, make, to be his witnesses, to make disciples. I can't tell you, it was thrilling to me to sit outside my house and do this Bible study with this, evang this evangelistic team. I can't tell you also this, but you guys need to be planning for 2024. I think we're going to be going on a little bit of a tour. I really do. Anybody who wants to go. I don't know what it looks like yet. The Lord's just telling me. We are connected to these places. Okay? And again, I'm much more comfortable being home and, and in, a, in a place that's comfortable for me. So going to those places is not my idea of a good time. However... If God's calling me, that means it's going to be a great time. That means souls will be saved. That means people will be healed. I'm looking forward to this, this uh, revival in Houston. And uh, I'll, I'm, I'm going to be leaving right after church next Sunday. And I'll probably be gone for a week and a half because I'm going to go down and see my kids while I'm down there. But um, I'll, I'll have something in the can, and I know you already do. Uh, the, the thing is, we're about to see some, some excitement go on. Um, sometime in July, we're going to go live on Subsplash. I'm getting a quote right now from a sound engineer so that we can make sure all of our equipment is what it needs to be so that all of you hear it and everybody that is listening on Roku or wherever else we're going to be can hear it too. But it will, it will allow us to begin to build even in the community because I know there are people who wouldn't necessarily come in the building right now, but they might watch it on Roku. They might check it out, and we'll be able to do our whole service. So we're gonna have to we're gonna have to sharpen up our stuff. We'll start doing more of the music with the lyrics and the sound, and us doing the primary vocals. And and I think that's gonna be a lot of fun for us too going forward. So we can we can put our whole service up there, um, and I think it'll help us to reach. Yeah, you know, I think what's gonna happen. Okay. What's going to happen is what happened um, when John Osteen, the, the anointing hit over in Houston, and he was at the feed store. And, and all of a sudden, there wasn't room anymore. What I'm saying to you is I think people from, people from Marfa are going to hear the truth. People from Alpine, people from Valentine, people from Galveston drove to Lakewood. That's an hour and a half drive. You know, I'm what I'm saying, and it's not, I'm a little prejudiced, but I think it's prettier around here, you know. So what I'm saying is I, I believe God's up to something huge, and I want to be a part of it, and I'm praying that you, too, you do too. Now, part of that means that sometime in the next six months, there are some other things that are going to happen. I'm going to stay on as senior pastor, but I, I need to have, we need to have a lead pastor here. The, I'm already getting called to go places in business and ministry, and it's not fair 
to what this church can be to the local community to not have somebody that's focused solely on that. And I've been dividing my time and I've had to I've had to get forgiven a couple times, but get some grace, really. I wasn't forgiven before I even asked. But I, I'm saying to you is that some, God's up to something here. And I, I, I want us all to be able to, to see it and be a part of it and grow into it. I'm going to close up with this. This is really important because we need to know who we are. And I know that could sound like I'm beginning another hour's worth of sermon, but I'll race through this as much as I can. I want you to understand who you are may not be who you think you are. I, 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 and, and a lot of times our thoughts and our words frame what we're going to do. I saw a story of, of a seven-year-old girl who was on uh, Steve, Steve uh, the guy who does the, the game shows. I forget his name. Steve Harvey. Steve Harvey's little big shots. She was seven years old. And she said, in 2024, I'm going to be in the Summer Olympics. She's candidating for it right now. What we think and what we say, those are principles God tells us in the Word of God. So we need to watch what we think and watch what we say because we can create things with our thoughts and our words because we're created in the image of our Father. Let me take you through these scriptures. Then God said, let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky and over the livestock and over all the wild animals and over all the creatures that move along the ground. So God created mankind in his own image, in the image of God. He created them male and female. He created them. God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful and increase in numbers, fill the earth and subdue it. All right. We are created in the image of God. That tells us that right in the beginning, of Genesis. Image is not necessarily this. It's all of this on the inside, all of who we are, spirit and soul, body. Jesus walked around wearing one of our bodies. He wore the same earth suit, kind of earth suit. We have an earth suit on right now, but we're not the earth suit. We're wearing the earth suit. You hear what I'm saying? In the beginning, okay, in the beginning, and let's see where I'm at. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. Sometimes we have a vision in our life, and we feel the Spirit of God hovering over that vision, and we, and we feel that, that positive, we're being moved into that vision by the Spirit of God. It says, and God said, you see, when you got that going on, when, when, when you're being moved by the Spirit, God's given you a vision. He's showing us how to bring that vision to come to pass. All right? And God said, let there be light. What happened? The Jeopardy song didn't play. Okay? And there was light. Now, I, I, will, I will tell you this, that I understand the the solid stance around the 24-hour creation day that was taken by many who basically take that from the translation that's known as the King James Hello Bug. And 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 we need to understand that word day simply means period of time. That's what that word means. In, in the evening and the morning was the first period of time. So there was a period of time. And I, and I believe that that corresponds with what we see in the evidence in creation because God said it's the glory of God to conceal a thing. It's the glory of kings to uncover it. So as our scientists dig in and they find out these details, we see back into the history that's being reflected of what God has said. All right, and then, and then we need to... Bring it a little closer to home. I know he's like the 12th great-grandfather, great-great-grandfather to all of us, but Abraham, as it is written, I've made you a father of many nations in the presence of him whom he believed, God. God, who gives life to the dead and calls those things that do not exist as though they did. Now, what did we, you know what? 
in Genesis one, there had it had been that wasn't that isn't from Genesis one. That is from Romans. I forgot to make that change. Romans either Romans four seventeen or Hebrews four seventeen. But I'll say Romans for now. All right. So what 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 we're saying is we're created in the image of God. We're created in the image of God who gives life to the dead and calls those things that do not exist as though they were. All right. I, I I have to I have to tell you we got the word says out of the mouth of two or three witnesses every word is established. So I got another witness for you right here from Job chapter twenty two, the twenty sixth through the twenty eighth verse. For then you will have delight in the Almighty, and lift up your face to God. You will make your prayer to Him. He will hear you, and you will pay your vows. A lot of times I want to tell you when we're making our way along to God, we make Him some promises. Have you made any vows to God along the walk of your life? All right. There'll, there'll be a time where we're going to keep those vows, all right? We'll pay our vows. He says, you will also declare a thing, and it will be established for you, so light will shine on your ways. We are created in the image of God who calls, who raises the dead to life and calls those things that are not as though they were. We are created to be able to go into all the world now that we're washed in the blood and empowered by the Holy Spirit to go into all the world and to be his ambassadors. We're each one of us ambassadors for Christ. And we can go into the world individually and collectively. We can send into the world. But, but I'm not about creating a, a, another association that donations are made to. What, what I'm hoping to do is we move forward. and We're working with some of these is that we'll have elders who will oversee a fund and when people when people are reaching out and they need bibles or they need whatever they need water pumps that will be able to take care of that i i will have to find out there, there are several the guys told me there were several languages yesterday uh, but um, they're teaching them english by the way that's part of the part of their in their their way into these villages is they're teaching them English. And guess what? I know that the, the school boards in the United States will be rolling over. They're using the Bible to teach English. Imagine that concept. <laughs> yeah, maybe we should get that to work here. So, hallelujah. All right, come on up, Rita. We're going to line this up. I just, I just want to say that as I've been walking along in this path, these last 20 plus years when the mission had closed and I, and I, I didn't know what I was going to do. I was 10 years of doing the thing that I loved the most, which was, I was preaching and teaching two, three times a day. Um, people were getting saved. Miracles were happening. I was watching the Bible unfold in front of me and then that got closed. And some other stuff happened, you know, I, I didn't know. I mean, when you obey God, like I said, the devil doesn't care if you read the Bible. He just cares when you obey. Well, I have been through some stuff. And, 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 and I didn't go through it alone. God carried me through. But when I stood out on the beach and I had a vision... I didn't know how it was going to happen. I just knew that I served a God who raised the dead to life and called those things that were not as though they were. And so I called in resources to be able to minister to the widow, the orphan, and the stranger because the church is, I got to tell you, falling down bad right now in that arena. We're not caring for the, you know what? This little church is doing a lot more for some of those refugees than the whole body of Christ is. And, and I don't understand that. And then, and then I do. Because one of the things that's next to being the most prevalent to Christ in the church is the world. And the world wants to build a model of franchising. And that's the way a lot of churches are. I just want to preach and teach, see people saved, see, see them filled with the Holy Spirit, see them healed and rise up out of the circumstances that, that the enemy meant to destroy them with. 
And, and, and as we do that, as our heart lines up with Him, my, my scripture from 1 John, and I'm just going to have to read it again. It's one of my, one of my very favorites. Uh, I, I've got it. I've got the chapter, First uh, John chapter five, on the ringer of my of my phone. But this is this is the thing that that got me. Starting in the fourteenth verse, and this is the confidence that we have in Him, that if we ask anything according to His will, He heareth us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we've desired of him. There are people in Christianity who say those words are euphemisms. I call them scripture. All right. Well, yeah, that's all about just getting you saved. That doesn't mean, you know, he's involved in your marriages and families and businesses and da-da-da-da-da. And you, you know, there's none of that name it and claim it stuff. And no, 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 no. Everybody has religious arguments. The guy laying at the, at the pool of Bethesda had religious arguments for Jesus when he asked him, do you want to be healed? Well, I've been laying here 37 years. I didn't get my Social Security or disability. I don't know what I'm going to do. Jesus then said, I didn't ask you that. He said, do you want to be healed? Are you willing to see yourself past where you are into the place where God wants you to be, where he has planned for you to be? He's asking you that this morning do you want to be whole do you want to be saved father here we are in your house at the altar the altar of our heart the one that really counts father i pray that those who are listening that don't know you as savior lord jesus or maybe they do and they've marginalized you by creating a religion rather than a relationship. Yeah, everybody can create a religion, but you created a relationship and a way, and the truth and the life, the way, the truth, the life. Father, right now I know Holy Spirit, you're piercing hearts, whether they're in this room or whether they're listening to this recording, you're piercing hearts because you're not in time, you're outside of time. Time is contained in eternity. Father, right, right now, I just agree with them, and I, and I just want to set the captives free right now. And, and just if you'll just pray with me, Lord Jesus, my thinking was wrong. My actions were wrong. I wasn't doing justly. I wasn't loving mercy. I wasn't walking humbly with you. I didn't know you, but, but I want to know you. I believe you died for me. You died on the cross for my sins, my guilt, my shame. Come into my heart and be my Savior. If you prayed that prayer, you're born again. If you prayed that prayer, you're restored to the creator of the universe who raises the dead to life and calls those things that are not as though they were. Welcome to the family. Welcome back. The next thing to do is to follow in believer's baptism. And if you have a church nearby, they'll know what that is. Tell them about your decision. They'll be excited. And if not, well, we'll figure out a way to get that done. I want to tell you something else. There's another baptism. It's happening right now, but you'll become aware of it more and more as you walk into this relationship with Jesus. It's called the baptism of the Holy Ghost. The Spirit of the living God has come to live in you. When you made that decision, he came to make his home in you. Now what he's asking you is, make room for me. Because he has your best in mind and heart. And Father, I pray for those who are believing for healing or some miracle in their lives today. You are healing Jesus. You answer prayers. Father, these answered prayers will turn into testimonies. These testimonies will turn into a deeper walk with you. These testimonies will turn into salvations. So, Father, I thank you right now for healing body parts, healing minds, healing spirits, healing broken hearts, delivering from addictions, 
and dependencies, delivering from mental health oppression, depression, anxieties, broken by the blood of Jesus Christ. And those of you who are believing for other miracles, I didn't mention them, but God knows your heart. I just want to stand in agreement with you right now that your prayer is heard. Humble yourself before the mighty hand of God. Do justly. Love mercy. Walk humbly with your God. Lord, we ask your blessing on this message, on those who've heard, and on the week ahead. In Jesus' name, amen. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know he holds the future. And life is worth the living just because he lives. Did? Yeah, so that's the mother's mind with God. Okay. She had been gone. She's good to be back home and under our beautiful sky. Thank you for all all the things that I know we're going to close them. We're going to close them because on the side.